Hello, everybody, and welcome to another version of Hawk's Scan Sentry Report. I am Hawk Arps, Vice President of Yon Arps Traders Toolbox, and this is the Scan Sentry Report for the week beginning Monday, August the 19th. Well, let's take a look at the markets and see what the charts have to show us. Those of you familiar with Hawk's Scan Center report have seen this eSignal watch list before where I have created a set of synthetic symbols that are ETFs showing the relative strength of each ETF to the SPY or the S&P in general. And here uh, at the top I have a set of US indexes relative to the SPY the different uh, sectors relative to the SPY and some other uh, ETFs here relative to the SPY and down below you can see I have some regional ETFs relative to the SPY. Using our scan sentry tools such as the TTB triple trender which you see here and the TTB radar 3 tool as well as uh, Trend Exhaustion 1, Radar 1, Fear Greed, etc. I can identify what areas in the market are strong and weak relative to the S&P in general. And looking at this data right now, uh, particularly all of these American indexes, I can see that the TTB Triple Trender shows us that the Dow is the weakest of the American indexes and that the NASDAQ is currently the strongest of the American indexes and while the S&P seems to have been led through its most recent rally by the Russell um, the Russell is showing some weakness relative to the SPY currently right now so um, if you're a spread trader you might want to sell the Dow while uh, buying the NASDAQ otherwise uh, if you just want to uh, buy the strongest index right now, that would be the NASDAQ. Looking at the sectors, uh, if I look at the score here of the different sectors, I can see that XME appears to be one of the strongest. That's metals and mining, uh, as well as materials here, XLB, and industrials, XLI, also appears to be uh, strong relative to the SPY and interestingly enough we see that financials are doing worse than the S&P in general. I always like to look at utilities to see if, if they're strengthening and they don't appear to be. When the utilities sector starts to strengthen that's often a sign that money is fleeing to more safe sectors. Looking at some of these other ETFs relative to the SPY, um, of course this S&P has been pretty weak over the last week or two, so the short ETF is much stronger than the long SPY. Uh, the dollar is strengthening relative to the S&P, uh, while we see gold is doing much better than the S&P. And when we use this information, uh, in conjunction with, for instance, this metals and mining is looking strong. Uh, further down here you can see that the uh, gold producers versus gold is also quite strong right now. We get the sense that um, gold may have found a bottom. It appears to be much stronger than the S&P right now, so there is money uh, flowing back into gold finally. Looking at some of the regional ETFs relative to the SPY, uh, over the past several months we've seen these showing a lot of weakness, uh, but now I'm seeing green everywhere, uh, a lot of sixes in the score. So as far as the worldwide flow of money is concerned, it looks like the, there's more buyers in some of the other worldwide markets than there are in the S&P. If you've been following the Scan Center report this summer, you've heard me say several times that the Russell has been leading the S&P up the rally that we've been experiencing this year. 
And so let's take a look at the Russell and see if it's uh, giving us any signs. As you note, we did get a trend exhaustion 3 signal right up here at the top uh, in a week or two ago, and that portented this recent drop. And now we can see that the triple trender is bearish. However, we still see a lot of buying in general. The, the selling from the fear greed is not convincing. In fact, at this point, uh, what I see forming is a pullback divergence or a type 2 trend divergence if this thing rolls over. So what I would expect to see here is a continued drop perhaps to this uh, support level at 105.10 or somewhere around there and perhaps a bounce off of that or a consolidation off of that until the indicators show us more bearish confirmation i.e. something like uh, some bearish trend strength in the radar 3 uh, significant selling identified in the radar 1 if you agreed I'm seeing this drop in the index as a pullback in an uptrend. Now looking at the strongest of the markets we identified that as the NASDAQ uh, you can see it also showed the trend exhaustion 3 up here at the top and identified the recent bull flag breakout right here and the NASDAQ still shows a long-term trender as bullish however we do see a significant divergence here in the radar 1 fear greed uh, so I'm not surprised to see price falling after this top has been identified. Uh, however, we don't have bearish confirmation yet. It's not time to sell short. Uh, this is simply telling me that it's time to get out of my longs or look for uh, another entry opportunity when acceleration moves back in the direction of the trend. Taking a look at the S&P, you can see that it has flipped all three trenders to bearish but the radar 3 trend strength is still showing uh, general bullishness albeit weakness in the bullish trend I do see the radar 2 uh, approaching the oversold zone so sometime this week I would certainly expect to see a trend exhaustion 1 oversold signal also see here uh, quite a significant divergence in radar 2 bearish pivot divergence which was the portent for this drop from the top so in short what I would say is that we have not identified a trend reversal yet nonetheless we do see topping signals in all of the major American indexes and we're looking to see a bounce off of support or a breach of support before confirming bearish tendencies in these markets. Looking at the 50,000 share S&P, which is a bit shorter term time frame, you can see we're looking at about a week's worth of data here and the bearish trend was identified pretty early here. You can see somewhere right around here where the radar 3 uh, turned sh short and the triple trender was already short. Uh, we had a, our confirmation of this bearish trend which served us nicely as it fell towards the mid 1600s and we're still seeing a lot of uh, bearish indications here. We had a nice bearish pullback 23 recently and a bearish trender pullback which gave us good entry opportunities into this last little pullback down here. We are seeing a little bit of a bullish divergence here in this radar one fear greed so we're going to be watching carefully this part right here to see if it gets lower than this level right here or if it creates a a sub bullish divergence within this already bullish divergence and rolls over to the upside. If, if we start seeing a lot of buying we're gonna get out of these shorts and reconsider our short-term short position. Taking a look at the gold market this has been one of the more interesting markets to trade over the last several weeks. We recently did find a breakout above the downtrend line and 
as price has been moving up, we've been waiting for bullish confirmation. There were a lot of signals in our watch list that said that gold is strengthening, and you can see that it is. We're still below the long-term trender and the triple trender there, but the radar 3 trend strength is convincingly bullish, and we're seeing more and more buying in the radar 1 fear greed here. You can see a nice spate of buying over the last several weeks. So we do see strength in the gold market. However, when we drill down to a shorter term time frame, here in this case the 4181 share chart, we do see some interim topping signals, uh, i.e. there's a lot of divergences here at these new highs. We have a sweet pea divergence as well as a typical pivot divergence identified by our auto divergence tools. Uh, you can see I've marked uh, the divergence with the radar one here uh, with our trend line there. So I'm looking for the week to begin with a little drop perhaps down here to this significant support level around 1343. It could be a little, little lower than that. And then myself I'll be looking for a bullish pullback entry opportunity somewhere at that price level. Let's take a quick look at the crude oil market. There's not a lot to really uh, say here other than the fact that uh, you can see that we have kind of lifted the price range to the next level and it's been bouncing back and forth since early July in this 104 to 108 range and we're just kind of playing ping pong in that area. We do see a triple top right here. Um, at least we're approaching a triple top so we'll be looking for the next move down. Uh, in general the crude oil market is still bullish. We're bullish above the triple trender uh, and we're bullish in the radar 3 trend strength index. We see some acceleration still in the radar 2 price leader and still have stronger buying than selling in the radar 1 fear greed indicator. Maybe we can get a little more uh, indication on the shorter term chart looking at the 6500 share crude oil chart. It's pretty much been sideways for the last week uh, ranging again more or less between 105 to 108, although now we're more uh, in the 106 range. I do see a little uh, divergence forming here in the radar one fear greed, so we're looking for the next bounce to the downside. Otherwise, I would describe the crude oil market as a sideways market with stronger bullish than bearish tendencies. As always, I want to thank you for taking a little bit of time to follow the Scan Center report. And as always, I want to remind you that the examples shown in this little video are for educational purposes only. Jan Arps Traders Toolbox is not recommending that you buy, and we are not recommending that you sell anything. We are simply trying to show you how to use some of the best technical analysis tools that you can find on this planet. So with the help of some good technical analysis tools, our wish is that the trend be with you.